In this video, we'll be going over this homework sheet, uh, extra practice with radians and special triangles. Um, to be honest with you, this sheet is pretty repetitive, but it's very good practice just to refresh your mind and memory on tr the trigonometry that you learned in grade 11, uh, because you probably haven't touched it in a while. Okay, so for the first question, uh, they ask us to convert the angle from degrees to radian measure. So some of them you can see I didn't show much work because my expectation is you have those memorized. Like you need to know 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. That, that's a must. Okay, so uh, I showed uh, for D and F I showed some work, but for A, B, C, and D, uh, A, B, C, and E, uh, you should really have those ones memorized. For two, uh, it's asking us to go from uh, radians to degrees. So multiply by the conversion factor, and there you go. But like for example, 2a, uh, we are definitely not, we, we should, really shouldn't need to show our work for this one. Pi over six radians, you need to memorize that as 30 degrees. For question three, they're asking us to state the exact value of six trig ratios uh, given the angle. So if it's like zero radians, give me the six ratios. So it was pretty repetitive. Now for zero radians and pi radians, you don't have a reference angle because zero radians and pi radians, those are quadrantal angles. So you can refer to the unit circle um, and look at the point on the unit circle. For example, if it was zero radians, the point on the unit circle I'm working with is one zero. It's one zero is the point. So I'm gonna write it down here, one zero. So since the y value is zero, sine zero is zero. And then the x coordinate is one, so cos zero is one. And tan zero is zero because it's y over x. Uh, and once you have sine, cos, and tan, you can take the reciprocal to find cosecant, secant, and cotan. Anyways, I, three was pretty lengthy. Um, for C, D, and E, you just need to know your special angles. Uh, one thing I didn't like about this question as I was doing it, uh, C and E were all in the second quadrant, so that was a little boring. Uh, but aside from that, it's very good practice. Okay, question four. Let's see, for four, they gave us, oh, okay, four, the angles are all in the first quadrant, so that actually makes it very easy. For four, they also gave us one ratio, and your job is to solve for the other five ratios. So really, uh, they start you off with two of the three. So if you have x squared plus y squared equals, y squared equals r squared, this is from the circle, you'll always be given two of the three. So in this case, I'm given x and r, so you have to solve for y. Uh, and once you know x, y, and r, you can solve for all six trig ratios. Okay, so that was pretty repetitive. So that's uh, C over there. Okay. Yeah, not much to say. Uh, I rationalize the denominator all for all my solutions um, just because it's a good habit. Okay, for five was really lengthy. Let's see. For five A, I am told that sine theta equals a over b. So sine theta equals a over b, then I don't know what x is, because sine is y over r. So a is y and r is b. So solve for x, use the Pythagorean theorem, reject the negative because I'm told the, uh, the angle is in the first quadrant. It's acute. Uh, once I have sine theta, I can solve for the other five trig ratios. I rationalize the denominator. Like I said, it's just my habits. Uh, B, uh, for 5B, I'm given tan theta, so I have to solve for R. So I have Y and X, I have to solve for R. Uh, the algebra is a little more complicated, but that's what R is. And then uh, once you have R, X, and Y, you can write all the other five trig ratios. I just want to make a quick comment that four and five are essentially the same. I know five, the algebra is a lot more complicated, but the idea, the, the logic is really much the same. 
Okay, so C, the algebra is pretty chunky here. I'm given secant theta. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so I have x and r. I'm missing y. Solve for y, and then you have x, y, and r. I can write all the trig ratios you want. I rationalize the denominator. That's why it looks a little weird. Okay, 5 was lengthy. Let's see. So for 6, 6 was just asking us to find uh, the exact values. Not much to say there. Um, so for C and D, I wanted to show you guys a few extra steps just in case you wanted to see them. But I'd be very happy if you can just tell me the answer is like negative 2. Because you're not allowed to use a calculator, I trust you. I know you didn't punch in your calculator. Saying that, for this sheet, it's a very, if you are ever doubtful of your answer, just punch in the calculator. Uh, 7, just some more exact values. Uh, not much to say there. Yeah. But it's good practice because we're still transitioning from degrees of radians, so all these repetitions are, are good for you. Uh, for question 8, they're basically giving us the ratio and your job is to solve for the angle. So to be honest with you, for number 8, you can really just do, it, uh, what you, do the same thing you did in grade 11, but now you have to express your angles and radians. So 8, I would argue, is exactly the same as what you did in grade 11. So there's not much to say. Uh, but I'll tell you, there's really a two-step process. Identify the quadrants, identify the reference angle, and you can solve for the principal angles. Uh, number 9 and 10 are really uh, grade, uh, grade 10 trig. So 9, I believe we're solving for the angle of inclination, solving for this angle. So I expressed the angle in radians. They didn't tell me if they won in radians or degrees. So since it's a grade 12 course, I'm going to express it in radians. Oh, I, I chose a sine ratio, by the way, opposite and hypotenuse. Uh, for 10, I'm missing the angle here. Oh, I'm missing the length of the ramp. Oh, sorry, this is the... This is, um, a cable car. How long is the ride? So solve for this. Uh, what I've labeled as R. So the ride is about 987.4 meters, Pythagorean theorem. Um, and to solve for this angle, I chose a tan ratio because opposite over adjacent, uh, inverse tan, and that gives me 51 degrees of that. Okay, so of all the questions, 11 is the hardest. So how do we do 11? So you want a ratio of the arc length to the line segment. The ratio of the arc length to the line segment. So let's do the arc length first, because that's actually the easier one. So the arc length, you can use the definition of radians to, to solve for the arc length, because 1.5 radians is equal to the arc length, which I've, which I've labeled as y, over the radius of the circle. So if you rearrange it, y, the arc length, must be equal to 1.5 r. 1.5 times the radius. Now what about the line segment AB? Hmm, now be careful. This is not a right triangle. This is not a right triangle. It's actually pretty close to being a right triangle, but it's not. Now even though it's not a right triangle, the good news is that it's an isosceles triangle because these two lengths are equal because they're both the radius of the circle. So how do I uh, solve for the length of the line segment AB? I'm going to use the sine law. Okay. Now what are these two angles? These two angles are congruent because they're, it's an isosceles triangle. So pi minus 1.5 radians all over 2 will give me the size of uh, theta. And why did I know why did I, why did I want to know theta? Because I'm going to use the sine law. So x over sine 1.5 is equal to r over sine of pi minus 1.5 all over 2. Uh, solve for the line segment AB, which I've denoted as x. And then we can solve for the ratio. y over x, arc length to the length of the line segment. I know it looks a little chunky, but the, 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 the radius cancels each other out, actually. So the radius of the circle is irrelevant to the ratio. 
which is beautiful. Uh, and then just basic math, you get 1.1. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too bad.